1915, King George I made a gift to Cambridge University Library that would change it forever. Until that time, the University Library had been contained in what one visitor called two mean rooms of moderate size, and wasn't really a library befitting such an important university. In 1714, one day before the death of Queen Anne, John Moore, Bishop of Ely, died. He was an incredibly prolific book collector and had made this enormous collection of some 30,000 books and manuscripts over the last few decades. He was extremely interested not only in religion and theology and the classics and the subjects that one might expect of a clergyman, his interests ranged as far as science, architecture, the illustrated manuscript, anything that he found interesting and attractive. After his death, there was a large amount of debate about who exactly would get this wonderful collection of books. John Moore's executor set a price of £8,000 for the collection. This was a huge sum of money for the time, and there were many people who would have liked to buy it but simply couldn't afford it. It was decided in the end, through the intervention of Charles II Viscount Townsend, that George would give the books to Cambridge University. On the 20th of September 1715, Townsend wrote a letter to the Cambridge University Vice-Chancellor and Senate, stating that, for the encouragement of learning, and as a mark of his royal favour, George I was going to buy John Moore's library and give it to the University of Cambridge. The university wrote back just four days later expressing their enormous gratitude and stating how they would make this known as the Royal Library to express their gratitude to the donor. It retains the name of the Royal Library to this day. When the books began to arrive, the first problem that was noticed was there simply wasn't space for them. The two mean rooms that the library was contained in just did not have the space to organise and to properly shelve all of these wonderful new books. It took some years before proper bookshelves were installed in the library and before what used to be known as the law school was fitted out to put the king's books in. A local joiner, John Austin, was commissioned to build new cases for the books and these cases were very simple and elegant. Unfortunately, they simply weren't big enough. The books were too large and there were too many of them. So over the succeeding years, it was decided that the university library would expand into the second of the two rooms available into what used to be the Regent House. But to do this, the university itself, which was essentially sharing a small suite of medieval buildings, would need to move to a new venue. As a result, in 1730, the new Senate House, now at the heart of Cambridge City, was opened, and the library was able to expand further into the medieval buildings. The university library became, in effect, a tourist attraction it features in several of the tourist guidebooks written in the mid-18th century for visitors to Cambridge, and particularly noted are the beautiful and attractive cases which were set up for the Royal Library. Over the following few hundred years, the books remained in this position, on the bookcases within the medieval buildings. As the Copyright Act of 1710 took effect, the stock of the library grew and grew and grew, and there simply wasn't enough space anymore for all the books that were held. Eventually, after the library had overfilled even the numerous extensions that were built in the old schools, it was decided to move. In the early 20th century, the architect Giles Gilbert Scott, designer of the red telephone box, was commissioned to design a new library building. And in 1934, the whole library moved, lock, stock and barrel, across the river to the current site. This included moving not just the Royal Library books, but their cases as well. It was decided that these cases housed the Royal Library, they should come too. In what proved to be an extremely complex procedure involving removing the books, deconstructing the cases, moving the cases, and then re-erecting the books on their cases, the Royal Library was moved and remained on public access on the galleries of the North Front and the South Front of the University Library's current building. In the 1950s, the decision was taken to remove the books from open access. The environmental conditions on those north and south front cases, the fact that the books were ever increasing in value, and the simple fact that they were wearing out from extreme use, meant that they needed to be put on closed access in secure stacks and fetched on request for readers. Some of them did remain borrowable for a few decades longer, 
but now all the books are fetched to the Rare Books Reading Room on request for readers. They still remain one of the library's core collections, and somewhere between 30 and 50 books that used to belong to John Moore are fetched to this reading room every week. The books have been moved once again, for the last time we hope, in the last 12 months, into what is now the university's most secure and most environmentally stable storage. What used to be two small rooms is now contained just within a small stack of rolling shelves. The library has grown constantly around John Moore's collection, but it remains at the heart of the library. To mark the 300th anniversary of the arrival of John Moore's collection at Cambridge University Library, the exhibition now on display in the Milstein Exhibition Centre has been selected to show the background to the formation of Moore's collection and also the way in which the collection has changed not just the University Library but the City of Cambridge as well.